listen, you, you talk about all injuries, so people get hurt anywhere. Um, what's the like? What is the weirdest thing that somebody's called you on? Basically, I would say the craziest one is one time we had two clients. They were laying in bed, and the ceiling fell on them what? in the apartment. The ce- and I asked an attorney, I was like, do you think you'll be able to do something with this? An attorney better call a doctor. The ceiling <laughs> fell down on them? Are you serious? <laughs> Yo, 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 it's your boy, it's Phil Wham Bam Benamino, and it's another Wham Bam Wednesday, baby. You know the show about ordinary people who have done extraordinary things. But as, as always, we got to ask you, click the link down below, please. Subscribe, check it out, love it, like it. Give us some comments. Give it, give it to some friends. Give it to your neighbor. Check it out, okay? Because, you know, we got all kinds of people on this show. And today, for all those that have been out there, all you ladies have been asking me, where are the women? We want to hear from a woman entrepreneur. I got one for you today. She's young, 26 years old, but she's out there grinding it. It's Lexi Broadwaters in the house today. Hi, Hi Lexi. How are you? Hey, Phil. Thanks for having me on the show. I a- appreciate it. Absolutely. You look stunning today. Look at you Thank all you. there. Y'all, is this how you dress every day? Uh, yeah, dress for success. That's what they say. <laughs> that's what they say. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's awesome. So tell the viewers a little bit about what you do and name the company and what, what's, where you're at right now today. Yes, so I've been in personal injury for about seven years. And if you don't know what that is, that's typically dealing with people who have been injured um, on some type of tort claim, meaning car accidents, slip and falls, dog bites, all of that. So So wait a second. So you get a car wreck, boom. You get hurt, (laughs) call you. Exactly. Call you. You get some money. All in that order. You get some money. (laughs) You get some money. So that's kind of like those, those big signs. You guys got a slogan? What's your slogan? You know, I think after today, I'm going I'm to definitely have one. <laughs> <laughs> you do a Rexy, call Lexi exactly. or something like that, you know? I think I'm going to go with <laughs> We're that. We're going to come up with something. We'll come up with something for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. That'll be good. That'll be good. So, yeah, that's what I do. So, uh, listen, you, you talk about all injuries. So, people get hurt anywhere. Um, what's the, like, what is the weirdest thing that somebody's called you on that they got, that, you know, they slipped and fell? Because let's be honest, not all claims are real claims, or are they? That's you know? fair. That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> I won't, I won't deny or, you know, accept that. But basically I would say the craziest one is one time we had two clients, they were laying in bed and the ceiling fell on them what? in the apartment. The ce- and I asked an attorney, I was like, do you think you'll be able to do something with this? An attorney? You better call a doctor. The ceiling <laughs> fell down on them? Are you yeah. serious? Yeah, well, they went to the hospital, but I was like, is that a claim? And they're like, yeah, it's a claim. It's You know, the ceiling <laughs> fell on them. So the ceiling did indeed fall on them. <laughs> now, what, what are they in a condo or apartment or something like, like a, that? A, a little rundown apartment. You know, they weren't upkeeping everything wow. so that's on the apartment that's on the apartment complex yeah so let's talk about that yeah how much money can you get for that well i will <laughs> say they uh were definitely in the six figures six figures yeah and up and i mean it's all dependent on the injury right because like you said not all claims are as severe mm. so with that being said sometimes if you have a severe injury and you got hit by a truck driver there's a lot there then sometimes you might have a severe injury but that person didn't even have insurance Mm. and now that's why you always have coverage have your own coverage (laughs) yeah have you ever ever gotten a situation where somebody is like their coverage ran out yesterday yes oh yeah sketchy (laughs) yeah how how do you navigate through that um that's why you just have to have your own coverage because in georgia if you carry uninsured motorists no matter who hits you or um what the situation is if you're not at fault they will cover you or med pay. You can have that on your own policy. So you're not reliant on who hits you. Yeah. Yeah. So, so bizarre <laughs> when you think about some of the cases, you know, slipping and fall, you get that in a lot of businesses and stuff where, you know, people claim or, you know, wrongful situations that happen. Can, can that be a claim? Yeah. The worst, um, is when clients, did you sign the paperwork? Alex, did we get her signed paperwork? Why won't you just slip on the way out of here or nothing? Are we covered, man? Are we covered? I just want to make sure we're covered. All right. I put my fake name on there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, basically, you know, when people um, get into those type of situations, if they lie, they'll sometimes remember it. Clients will remember the story different. Mm. Oh, this happened, that happened. Amnesia. It happens. And, you hit your head, you know? And we get the video once we're in court, and it's like the slip. Uh, the wet sign is right beside them. They're like, no signs, no, nothing was there. And then we see the video and we're like, your story is not at all <laughs> <laughs> what happened. 
well you know what in today's day it's got to be so much easier now to get footage and stuff because yeah. everywhere you go you're on you're, you're being you're being videoed exactly. you know you can't go to a grocery store you can't walk outside you can't even speak out loud your phone knows who you're talking to <laughs> you know what i mean it starts talking back to you so you got to yeah. always wonder there's yeah. going to be something out there you know that you can you know it's going to come up with something right body cam footage too with the police officer now you ever have any problem with that where people like they try to if you go to court and they try to fight it and say well that footage isn't real like how do we know that's real footage it might have been mm -hmm. taken a day after yeah something that sort of like Honestly, i'm just trying to think here yeah there everything pops up you know from the defense side and the plaintiff side everyone's just making we have um times where they will pull up the instagram and one of our clients a woman might have like a dress on she's obviously going to the club which means she can be dancing which means her back doesn't hurt and it's like you're taking all of that ah, from one picture from yeah. one picture um with a tight social dress on. media they're out there doing little selfies <laughs> yeah, yeah. they don't realize they're screwing themselves yeah they're enjoying life they're not hurt <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's 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 weird now how long does it typically take to get a claim like what's the average when it, when it goes through i would say you can do it anywhere from four months is probably the quickest if you are actually having to go get treatment because you know with the doctor that's going to take some time and then um sometimes it can happen right away too if it's severe enough and then it can take anywhere from four months to years depending on the severity what type of claims so it, that's one of the hardest questions when clients ask because there's no guarantee in time mm, gotcha now you haven't been doing this you, you've been doing this a little bit now um what are some of the biggest challenges like how do you find the clients how do you get clients the biggest challenges is how competitive the market is. As you see billboards, radio ads, you yeah. do not see more marketing than personal injury marketing right. on day to day. Must be they pay. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> they must be pay. So it's very competitive because you might have, you might, I know you, I'm talking to you, but then you have someone, you know, poaching clients or, hey, we'll give you this, we'll do that. So it's a very um, competitive market, but everything I do is like a boots on the ground project, face to face, interacting with people. Um, I would say in business, you need to build a network of people who want to work with you and all of that. So I just, I do a lot of face to face interactions going into bars, different places, just to meet owners. Is there a certain spot, like you mentioned bars, is there a certain spot like, okay, a lot of crap could happen here, so I'm gonna go in here? You know what's funny, it's not even because it's happening there, it's the type of people that go there. The nightlife is the best place. Where there's alcohol involved, yeah. and drinking, and all <laughs> right, that. Right, the bad stuff you usually, know? you know, something is bound, someone is gonna get crazy, or there's drunk drivers out, things like that, so. What about those, like, those ax throwing places now? You know, mm -hmm. where people throw ax, you ever go, go in those places, like, Accidents probably could happen there. I'm just saying, you know. You're right. You're right. I, Gun actually, ranges. You have know. Have you seen an axe in anyone's head walking you know? out? <laughs> no, I've seen some people get cut though. I know some people that have gotten cut from the axe. I don't know if oh, that's yeah. their fault or the axe's fault. I don't know, yeah, I don't know how yeah. that works. They would say it was the. I'm axe's sure there's fault. waivers though. I'm sure there's waivers, right? <laughs> Do you ever yeah. fight against that where you, you know you think you got a claim, but you know a, a company's got these waivers put in place and oh, they got everything yeah. locked up? The balloon museum. Yeah. A lot of people broke their legs jumping into the little balloon. Uh, you know what I'm talking about? Oh, okay. Where they, you're talking, they like the balls and stuff? Yes. The ball were, pits, where they yeah. jump in the ball pits. And they're like, but yeah, so when that was going on, I knew like 10 different people who broke their leg or broke bones jumping into those, but they signed a waiver. So, so you explain that. What, what do you mean? They're running to just thinking that they're jumping in, and I guess it's, like like play zones and stuff. Yeah, kid, but like, they're for adults. So oh really? Uh, yeah, you've seen these. Uh, I haven't seen any adult fun. I mean, I've seen kids, I, which I've jumped in, but I've never seen any adult ones. Where do they have that? On Instagram, you never seen. It's like you know, a whole aesthetic museum. You go and there's bubbles. How old are you now? 26. See, 26. You're young. <laughs> You're young, man. I got a lot more years. I know I don't see that on Instagram. Oh, okay, okay. I'll, but I'll, I want to know. I I'll send go. it to you. <laughs> I want to go. Although, if I fell in, I probably wouldn't get out. I'd probably, I'd probably use you. Just don't sign the waiver. I could get some money. Don't <laughs> sign a waiver. There you go. That's yeah. all that's done. Yeah. So, you know what? Let's let's talk about how you got into this. Obviously, I know you, you grew up. You, you went to Kennesaw College. Yes. You know, big yeah. volleyball athlete. Yes. Okay. Yes, big stud yeah. there. Yeah. Um, let's talk a little bit about that because volleyball is such a great sport and a lot of people yeah. don't know it but now they're realizing it, it's it's a very expensive sport too yeah. to be in and there's it's it's gotten big it's gotten super big yeah Kennesaw is what d1 yes d1. Know? they were d1 when i went um volleyball is actually the fastest woman growing sport right now and a lot of women are joining it which i love to see uh but we did when i was there we were kind of building 
that legacy for Kennesaw to be more of a staple. And now I love. I actually went back to an alumni game, yeah. and it was it was awesome to just see how much and how far they've come yeah. from when I was there. Dude, you were a starter. You were good. I went to a couple of them games. I, rem- yeah. I, re- I remember you know you being a part of that. Do you miss it at all? You know, it's crazy. Life is moving so fast, and there's always the next new thing and the next project or thing you're invested into that my focus just shifts to that. I reminisce here and there, yeah. but I don't, I don't really miss it. So, you know, the question that all kids want to know, and because you're at a younger, younger generation, you've gone through college, did college help you get the job that you're at today? A hundred percent. Yeah. A hundred percent. It's not about the college. It's the experience. It's the experience of being with young uh, people your age or going through the same. I was waiting for you to say experience. I went to bars. And now that's where I'm getting my clients. So I made some relationships there. So tell me. Yeah. Yeah. That's actually what I did. I was always at Buckhead bars, to be honest. So I did meet a lot of people I'm still friends with and actually have gotten cases with from high school, college, all of that. Those are probably my biggest clientele is just from connecting through all throughout Georgia. You know, growing up on the south side of Atlanta, going to Kennesaw, I now live in Midtown. So I, I continue to connect with you know, the generation around me. So tell me about your generation because they say the Gen X is that kind of part of your generation, right? Yeah. Um, You know, social media has taken off so, so much. I mean, Mm -hmm. you've seen that over the years. Do you feel attached to your phone? Do you feel, do you feel attached to social media? No, actually I don't because I had to set boundaries for myself. Like I unfollowed all the vlog sites, all of that. It's about what you're consuming on social media. So if you're consuming a whole bunch of garbage, you're probably going to be like anything. It becomes a habit. You're addicted. Like if you look at my explore page, it's quotes. Like it's going to be a whole bunch of quotes and things. So I get on, catch up. And then, you know, when you're really working, you don't really have time to even be on your phone like that so much. But there were times I felt a little bit addicted and I had to set some boundaries to Do you, <laughs> do you worry about that being a female and you're yeah. an attractive female and stuff? It's so easy for somebody to go ahead and start watching you and stalking you and be. You ever had those issues? Yes, I had some weird interactions or encounters where people say, "Oh, I saw you post this," or maybe went somewhere because I posted something. So what I do is I don't post in real time. So if I'm at the bar or whatever, I'll That's probably smart. post smart. after. Yeah. That way you can still show. You they show up, a, think yeah. you're there, and you're not. <laughs> <laughs> like, dang, just missed her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I would say, like anything, you just knowing when it's the time and the place to do it and right. what to post. What do you think some of the biggest challenges are for kids today, especially women? Do you think it's different for women versus men when it comes to that? I think men are going through the same thing, the fake image, the Instagram, social media, everyone's fake on there to a certain extent. Even us, you know, with the business we do, we have to put on like a persona of some sort that we're going it's to- the highlight reel. Yeah. That's in the highlight reel. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So- You're going to see all the bad stuff. You're going to see the highlight reel. Exactly. So uh, with that, you want to show your best and then it's always, okay, how can I look better? How can I have a better post, a cool post? What are you willing to do for that post? Some mm. people are standing on the edge of mountains, you know, right, right. one one wrong step and you're dead, you know, for a post. So it, I just say, I think everyone- It's pretty sad, isn't it though? Yeah. When you really think about it, you know, especially yeah. the way you say it. Like, you know, uh, what was that one guy? He was a big YouTuber. He was like hanging off buildings and stuff. And yeah. he was uh, he was videoing it. And then eventually he fell. Yeah. And at his death, you know, it right. was like, you know, he was getting all these followers. He was so famous because he was doing all this crazy stuff. And now he's gone. It, it feeds you. Get Having people like what you do, it feeds something in you. It motivates you. But a lot of it is fake. It's not real. It's not lasting. So I'm like, don't take social media and make it your life. Use it as a tool. Use it as a resource. Have fun on it. But if you make everything about what you're trying to put on a screen, it just can be very uh, toxic. Well, I think it's I think it's easy. I think it's yeah. easy for you. You can become whatever you want to be. Yeah. You know, yeah. And, and unfortunately that happens. You ever get catfished? Um, well, I'm not looking for anyone. Yeah. So. <laughs> no, I know, but I mean, like, people clone you. Oh, yes, you that know, has happened. And, people and, take your pictures all the time and are using them. Yeah, I mean, it happened to me. I mean, Probably I have 10 clones. dating Believe sites. Believe it or not, somebody wanted to be me. I don't know why. I told them, be careful what you ask for. You know, but, <laughs> right. Uh, it was Pablo. 
I was Pablo, oh. and it, you know, I was like, that looks just like me. Yeah, but my name's not Pablo. <laughs> you, you could be a Pablo. <laughs> yeah, I could be Pablo. <laughs> Pablo Escobar. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, funny. but you know, it, it is it is challenging. You know, you use the word, you say it's fake, it's fake, but everybody does it. Everybody wants that dopamine hit. Yeah, and you know, they're searching for those likes and searching for those loves, and and it's funny because so many people will actually see your post but they won't click the like mm -hmm. and they won't click. And it's like, take zero effort to do it, but yet they won't do it because they don't want to give you the satisfaction of knowing that they saw it. Right. But yet they're looking. Right. No. I, I don't understand that. Do you understand that? I call it haters. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But no, I definitely. Why is that though? Why, why, why do you think that is? I think people really overthink it. I used to kind of be like that when I was younger, yeah. <laughs> but now I'm like, so if I like it, you're right. I'm so like, more experience. I'm like, who cares if I like your post or look at your story first or leave comments like, oh, I left a comment on your post. You didn't comment on my last three posts, so I'm not com like. I just don't even think about it like that anymore. I mm. used to. I used to think like, hmm, did they like my post last time? And it's so stupid. Right. I think it's just um, people think too deep. Yeah, everyone cares too much what someone thinks or is going to think if they do something. Well, it's funny too because people will spend hours and hours a day watching somebody else's life and they're not really focused on their own right you know and that's the one right. thing being an entrepreneur and obviously being a female entrepreneur you know you have to focus on what it is that you're trying to accomplish right. have you have you honed in on that because clearly you have you're you know yeah. you've been doing a really good job as a paralegal doing I, I mean we, we joke about it but it's it's a it's a real thing yeah it's, it's a real thing and it yeah. is competitive yeah. so you know how do you go about when you know there is so much competition i know you have to network you have to make relationships and stuff but you know what do you think the biggest challenges are is being yourself and knowing when something is worth your time and not worth your time because you can get sucked and pulled into a lot of different directions and think, well, maybe I'm doing it for an opportunity or uh, something good will come out of it. It's like just knowing, like you said, focusing. What do I really need to focus on that's going to build my brand, build my business and be, um, you know, it's going to help build me. So I would say, that is where I wasted a lot of time and I had a lot of learning is I was just doing like going to every event, going to everything I could to just try to connect with as many people as, pop, as possible. Yeah. But if there's no intention, then it's wasting your time. Right. So it's when I get in the room, who are the people I need to talk to in this room? Mm -hmm. You know, being intentional. If you're in a conversation, maybe I don't need to even have this conversation that long or go to the next place because there's nothing really fruitful here. Right. So other than drinking, you know, right. so like, yeah, it's cool to go to dinners, drinking, all of that. It's fun. But if you just do all that with no intention, are you really focused on, you know, how you're trying to build your brand? So that was my biggest struggle is you get drained. You get drained meeting all these people having to say the same thing over about what you do, how, you know, connecting and it, it can be draining. So to not be drained is being more intentional and being around higher level people or just the demographic you're trying to target. Yeah, that's well said. That's that's yeah. good. You know, um, you know, chasing these accidents and chasing problems. There's a lot of movies about that. Right? <laughs> you know? uh, there's some couple good ones out there about it. But you know, do do you find yourself like, you know, with automotive? Is that some you know place like collision shops, those types of things? With to me, I would lean more on you know that type of thing because somebody gets in a rack, the car is going to get towed. Yeah, tow trucks first thing called. So yeah. I want every tow truck, I want every tow company to know who I am and know my company, right? Yeah. I mean, that, yeah. that's just what I would do. I, I'm not saying I'm right. But it I'm, sounds like you should be in this industry. You know, I, I'm, just, I'm just trying to give you some hints, man. I'm yeah. trying to give you some yeah. things. I do have a little bit of experience in business. Yeah. So yeah. I was just trying to think, you know, how would you go about and where? You know, so many people tell you, say, tell you, obviously, social media is huge. But if somebody doesn't see it, right. then what, right? Yeah. If I'm in front of you, they're going to see me. Right. So right. that was that's that I control. I can't control what, what doesn't happen, yeah. but I can control what does happen. Right. And I think a lot of people today they forget that. Mm -hmm. That's why going back to the old school, the cold calling and getting in front of people and banging on the doors, mm -hmm. it works. It yeah. still works. Yeah. You know, there's so many people that want to sit at home and just want the money to come in and things be drop shipped and you know yeah. work off of these these pyramid schemes and all these <laughs> other things. But the reality, and, and some of those work for some people, yeah. but majority of it is. Hard work, getting out there, putting your face in other people's faces, building relationships, yeah. that's the key. And it sounds like you kind of mastered that a little bit. Yeah, I agree. I think it's always every day you're learning 
and like I said, what you're going to give your time to. Um, and with a competitive, just being in Atlanta in general and business, it's all competitive. And then with women, it's even more competitive because we're pretty much in a man's world, um, especially when. See, I think you guys got an edge. I'm just going to say that. <laughs> okay. Like, I think a, a pretty one, somebody's going to talk to you way more before they talk to a guy like me, you know, because you're a pretty woman and you're younger. So I think it gives you an edge. I, I yeah. really do. How, how do you feel like? You know, because I, I hear this all the time, like, oh, it's hard or woman's in a man's world. No, we're in your world, too. Like, we're in the same <laughs> world, you know? So I, I, I can't quite understand the concept of that. Yes. Yeah, so I say it's a man's world on everything is really more, I think, for a man to be able to excel. And women, like you said, have to know how to use their edge to their advantage, and not see it as like, oh, I'm a woman, it's a disability, you know? Mm. They have to use their womanhood as, like you said, where's my edge where I can fit in between that gray line, you right. know? But overall, it's a man's world. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's you have men and you have women. It's two different creatures, right? Yeah. God put that on the, on, on the earth for a reason. Right, But right. they both have purpose. That's the important thing. It's how, it's how you use it, yeah. yeah. Exactly yeah. how to use it. So let's talk a little bit about that because, you know, being young and you starting to make some really good money, um, what do you do with your money at a, a, a young age? Because a lot of these kids today, you see them out there, they're at the bars, they're popping bottles, you know, they're throwing <laughs> dollars at people and stuff. Like, Are you talking about my Instagram stories? I, no. <laughs> I've never been on your Instagram okay. story. So okay. tune in. We're going to have to check that one out. Alex, pull that up, man. We're going to have to check out some of your I'm Instagram like, is this stories. A, is this a jab? Yeah. No. Is, this what, is that what you do? Is that what you do? Yeah. Well, I, we know how you're spending it then. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I that's where I would like more guidance um, as you are when you're young and, you know, like you said, popping bottles, traveling, just living life, what you want to live your best life, especially while you're young and can experience it, you know, feel your healthiest probably and all of that. But there is an extent where it's like, OK, how much should I put aside and invest or how can I make my money make more money? Mm. And that's where I feel like I'm coming more into that maturity financially but I've definitely done a lot of just blowing money to enjoy life because if I don't know if you've ever heard. I like of how you said that. At least you realize yeah. I'm blowing money. Yeah. Okay. We're gonna talk about that. And I'm gonna help you this for a second. So let, let's okay. think about this. First of all, who is your partner in business? Is this a trick question? No, <laughs> it's a truth question. Okay. It's an honest question. It's partner, the viewers who's your partner in business? I would tell this everybody. Is this like a just a generic who is your partner? Yeah, who's your partner in business? You have a partner right now. Who's yeah, your partner? Yes. Um, I, I have a silent partner. Who's your silent partner? A guy. A guy. It, no, it's the IRS. <laughs> the IRS is your partner. No matter what business you are. And obviously you're okay. saying you have an actual partner. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But regardless of any business, you have a partner. Okay. When, we, when you go out and you start making money, you automatically have partners to the IRS. They're going to get a piece of your money. Right. Right. True. They're getting paid off of them, off of the work that you're doing. Mm -hmm. So they're your immediate yeah. partner. So right. if you're, IRS is your partner. How much money are they getting off of your, your pay? Too much. Too much. There's always too much. <laughs> but let's just round it. Let's let's say a number is 30%. Mm -hmm. Okay? Right. So if you made $1,000, they're going to get 300 of that $1,000. Mm -hmm. All right? Realistically. Right. So if your partner's getting $300, how much should you be able to get safely? Um, everything else that's left. <laughs> that's, uh, see, and that's where the, the, the mishap goes, okay? <laughs> what America and what people in these younger generations need to learn, if the IRS is living off of 30% of your paycheck, you too need to learn off, live off of 30% of your paycheck. Okay. So if they're taking 300 at 1,000, then you should live off of 300 at 1,000. Mm. That leaves you 40% left over, Yeah. okay? Yeah. Now, what you do with that 40% is really gonna change your life in 10, 20 years from now. Right. Because 10% of that, we're gonna invest in long-term stocks, 10% we're going to do short term, 10% we're going to have an emergency fund, 
car breaks down, something happens. Mm -hmm. And then there's still a 10% left over. Mm -hmm. which I call a fuck you fund. Okay. That's <laughs> like at the that end of the year. Yeah. At the end of the year, you want to pop a bottle or two, yeah. go on a trip or vacation, buy yourself a nice bag. Yeah. You're able to do that. Yeah. But you got to have rules. You got to have rules with the money. Mm -hmm. And that's the problem. People don't respect money anymore. Mm -hmm. Okay. They get it and they're like, oh, I got it. I'm supposed to spend it. Yes. But what are you spending it on? Do you think that they don't respect it because of how easy it is to spend now? Like digitally? It's always been easy. I think it's always been easy. You okay. know, let, let's just be honest. <laughs> I think the reason why they spend it is because everybody's looking up. Yeah. They're seeing the social media. They're seeing people that are wearing nice shoes or nice things. Yeah. You know, they want the jewelry. They want the gold. They want they want all these things. So they're spending it to try to stay up with the Joneses or yeah. act like they're somebody they're not. It amazes me. I actually had this conversation not too long ago on my pod before. It amazes me the amount of people that wear fake stuff. Okay. Yeah. Because they want to look a certain way yeah and it's like listen if you don't have it you can't afford it it's okay yeah you know what i'm saying you're yeah. still you're still gonna be loved yeah you know what i'm saying yeah. and if, if yeah. somebody doesn't love you then probably not a good person to be around anyway right you right. know what i mean i don't think anybody's gonna love you better because you have real sneakers or fake sneakers yeah. you know for a certain brand so to speak right. Right. you know type of thing but i think that's a lot of pressure i think a lot of kids have pressures and i was going to ask you that you know do you feel that you know as as being a young, younger woman and and trying to out there I got to have the Louis Vuitton purse. I got to have the, you know what I mean? Like you're laughing, yeah, you're laughing. Is yeah. that, is that I, a must? I 100% feel that pressure because people, clients are going to see how successful you look to determine how, what type of results they think you're going to get for them. Same with real estate. Okay, so I'm going to play devil's advocate. Okay. Because you know what? I too, back in the day, was in sales, early sales. And it's like, oh, you know, you think, oh, I want to drive the nice car. I want to drive. But you know what? People also think you're making too much money. Yeah. So then they think you're ripping them off. Do you ever think of that as a possibility? I I, I do think of that somewhat, <laughs> but I would rather them. Think I'd the rather be the poor guy pulling in, <laughs> you know, with the old beater working hard, right? Trying to earn your business. Yeah. You know, than yeah. somebody Flash Gordon, you know, walking in there with all the you know things. Yeah. I, I think there's a time for both. I think there's a place for both. I think Agreed. you got to know your audience. Exactly. So example. If I'm working with an attorney, getting an attorney account or a doctor, it's going to be more of relatability. You know, do they like you? Do they, you know, how do you look to them? First impression. Sure. So that's different. Yeah. Whereas maybe, like you said, a client, you don't want them thinking you're going to rip them off. So right. it is about, yeah. Who, I agree. Who, I think there's a lot of truth to that. Yeah. There's a lot of truth to that. But what about you as a person? Does it make you feel better though? You know, every bag I've ever bought or anything or makeup gifts, you know, I'm sorry. Oh, uh, yeah. It's like 20 minutes of like, oh, this is cool. And then if you saw how I treat my bags and everything, I'm like, <laughs> oh, I think my dog ate my, up my Chanel bag. <laughs> I left on the ground one day and I was like, of course. So I'm like, yeah, it doesn't really last. Yeah. It doesn't really last. But when you want to put on a nice outfit, you're like, oh, this looks good. I look good. Right. But, yeah. you know, the buying it definitely I've never felt like, oh, this was worth it. Right. You know, it's it's, <laughs> it's funny and ironic and, and college teaches a lot of things and it helps you out, but it really doesn't tell you what you do, what to do with your money when you have it. Yeah. It doesn't tell you what you actually need to know. Right. Life right. does. Life does. <laughs> You're right. And, yeah. and that changes. Yeah. You know, that changes yeah. all the time. I mean, think about it. Three years ago, you know, COVID shuts down the whole world. Yeah. Nobody planned for that. You know, right. and, it, and it changed a lot of things today, right. you know, because right. of it. And now you got robots, work. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. You got AI out yeah. there, you know I mean? There's just so much more that's happening that's just changing the world and stuff today. How do you think it's going to affect you in business as you growing up as well? Are you, are you fearful of that? Are you worried that there's not going to be enough jobs out there and stuff because things are taking over? And when I say things, whether it's AI, whether it's robots. I think you have to a hundred percent get with the wave. So I'm already like, how can I incorporate AI into my business? You know, how can I be with the wave? So as it progresses and gets better, I already know how to use it. A lot of stuff, if we don't know how to use it or utilize it to our advantage, you get left mm -hmm. or you can incorporate it into what you're doing so you don't get replaced. Right. I think a lot of, um, you know, people don't realize that when COVID happened and when the world was shut down, people, you know, realized that they could still function mm -hmm. from working from home or from doing different things. Yeah. Unfortunately, 
a lot of companies <laughs> turn to that. Right. 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 And realize that, okay, shoot, I don't need a hundred employees. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I just need 10 good ones at home working, you know, type right. of thing. Or, right. and it could be anywhere in the country. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of people in the world, Yeah. you know, type, type of thing. But you know, I, when it comes to sales, I think that there is a place face to face is always, always going to be there. I think yeah. there's going to be a lot of tradesmen's, you know, you're going to still, you're going to need a plumber. You right, know what I mean? Right, you're, you're, right. An AI robot's not going to come in and plumb your house. They're not going to know the layout of your house and everything else. Yeah. You know, you're going to need an electrician. One day. <laughs> you know, so I, I think they're going to be the majority. Like, yeah. They're going to yeah. be the ones, you know, the doctors that are making all the monies and everything. Yeah. You know, a, doc, a robot can go and we'll, they'll, they'll go there and do yeah. surgery. I mean, right now, unfortunately, do you hear about that one doctor that did surgery and, and went in and took out the person's liver? But oh. took out the wrong thing. Oh my goodness! Yeah, no. yeah. I mean, that shit's real. Yeah, like that stuff yeah. happens. You know. Yeah. That, he apologized. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He probably had a claim. That's a there. case. <laughs> yeah, that's a case. That's, that's a, case. a case. You probably need a claim. Yeah. There. But um. But yeah, I mean, that stuff really happens out there. So I think there's going to come a time where calculated risk is is going to be looked at, and if they can get a robot or an AI, you know, type generation thing to do it and eliminate, that's what they're going to do. But I think tradesmen are always going to be needed. Yeah. And as they eliminate jobs, though, there's also more opportunities being created, like all that drop shipping, people doing courses, people doing different things that are more about there's more room for entrepreneurs right now, yeah. um, especially because Trump's back. Yeah, there we go. Amen to that. Thank God. Thank God for that. But um, there's more. I lost some of my following because of that. Yeah, okay. I, I, y'all can unfollow me. It's okay. It was mind. okay. I know I'm okay too. I don't mind. Yeah, so, um, <laughs> you know, there's just more things you can actually do, though, as well. So, like, before, I felt like it was more corporate. There's a lot of, like, just corporate. I'm going to be a firefighter. I'm going to be just the basic run-of-the-mill stuff. Now there's so many things, like, you can be a podcaster, you can be a creator, you can be whatever that a robot can't be because you can only be you. Like no one else can be wham bam, right. you know? So you, you won't get replaced. You try, you try. You, try. <laughs> you will not get replaced by AI. <laughs> Thank you. That's true, that's true. Um, so you know what? What, 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 where is your future looking at? Like tell me a little bit about what a 25, 26 year old female who has an entrepreneurship who's making really good money what, what, what does your future look like where do you see yourself in 10 years from now i hope to learn more things learn how and go into like i love how you do a podcast you have your company i think any wealthy person you have to find more streams streams of income and how are you going to and enjoy it stop popping bottles <laughs> <laughs> you're right let somebody you're else right. pay for yeah. them bottles uh, well, no. <laughs> it's not, both are happening yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right but no i definitely i just want to continue growing and what i'm doing but also find more things i enjoy doing that can make me money right and you know what if you find things you enjoy doing it's yeah. not a job Exactly. Right. It becomes fun. And th and that's really, that's the American dream. Right. You know, if you can find something that you love to do. What yeah. is it you love to do? I love to help people and yeah. I love to meet new people and connect. So that's why I do love what I do right now. Yeah. It's a great feeling when someone, you change someone's life with them getting a check and they really did go through a lot. So I love that. But I'm like, there's more avenues I could do stuff like that with and make money. <laughs> wow, that's good. You know, let's talk about that, you know, being able to give somebody a check, Yeah. you know, for a certain amount of money. What, you know, I know you said six figures. So what, what's the biggest check you were able to get somebody, collect somebody? Um, so far, about half a million back in, po and back in pocket. So the case probably set because you know cases always settle higher, but then there's things that come out of the settlement. Yeah, your piece, your cut. <laughs> what is it thirty percent, forty percent? What are you guys getting now? Uh, typically, attorneys are at like about thirty three percent. Thirty three percent. Um, and then if it goes to court. 40 percent mm. so it's very high but we always say a lot of times it's like if you never knew you could even get this or obtain this without someone coming to you right then is it really it's funny though but isn't that really like collision that type of you know those claims that's really the only the only thing out there that i can think of that an attorney or somebody like that would say hey okay i'll do the work you can pay me later because they're risking on the fact that they're going to get paid. Right. So contingency fee. And the reason is because the risk is very low because we're getting paid by insurance companies. Right. So when you're suing someone, you hope that they have assets. You hope, you know, it gets resolved. But the insurance company is the richest in the world. So, mm -hmm. you know, when you know you're going after the richest company in the world, it's like, you know, the money's coming back some right. way or another. So they can take that risk of not getting paid up front. Has it ever happened where attorneys didn't get paid out? 
What happens oh, like you oh, go yeah. you go to a claim and you don't win? Oh, that happens all the time. So. But more times they are getting paid out, sure. so you need cases. Right. That way, when one doesn't work out, you know you can keep going. And attorneys don't have high overhead as far as like they don't have to you like you have a computer. You can just really have a laptop and a phone, and you could get everything done. Yeah. So it's not like you have to invest a whole bunch of money into this startup. You know, do you ever have any clients get mad at you because you oh. didn't come up with the right money that they they're like, man, you made more than I made. And then I'm the one that's, you know, suffering here for the rest of my life because of it. So the best I like that you brought that up. The best guarantee I give clients that work with me is that your attorney will never make more than what you make. So they'll worry about, oh, the percentage, this and that. But I'm like, let's say at the end, the outcome wasn't what we wanted our attorneys are going to make sure that the client, what they get back is going to be more than whatever the fee was. So they can't use that, but they can still be upset about how much they're getting back. And then I go back to, well, you got more than the attorney. Right. At the end of the day, you got something. Right? <laughs> you got more so. than the attorney and you know, we're working it out for you. Cause it's like, how can you really be that mad if you're the one coming out on top at the end? Right. So I think it's just how you handle clients, but some people, it doesn't matter what you say. They're just not going to get it. It's usually the, it's usually the people who never had money. Yeah. <laughs> now, do you find there's a lot of scam artists out there with in this industry as well? People that are kind of making accidents happen and setting shit up. You know? I cannot confirm or deny. <laughs> yeah. By 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 that tone of that look, you know I it's out there. I cannot confirm or deny. Um, Let me tell you what, man. Miami's got all kinds of scams going on in Miami. Yeah, I can I tell you that. About that, you know. Yeah. Th these people are all, you know, trying to. It's a rat race out there. I man. think the memes are the funniest when you see like them get like a tap and then they like stage the car and they're like all bent up. I definitely feel like everyone. It, it, there's a lot of opportunities. Do you get a lot of homeless people that no. file claims? No, and you know what? Homeless people probably have some of the best claims. Yeah, they're probably walking down the road like, let me try to get hit by a car so I can get paid. I, I can get out of here and go buy me a house. Right. I actually had a client from India. Man, we gotta, you better watch out when you're driving around town, man. I have to think <laughs> about that. Put that out there. Right. I jump in front of your car. and. Psh. Yeah, no, I had a client from India walking pedestrian, got hit by a, a semi-truck. He ended up getting about 400000 back in pocket and went back to India and is a millionaire now in India. And mm. he had no money. He was almost homeless, basically. Right. And yeah, so people's lives can definitely change. And I enjoy seeing that process and being a part of that. Yeah, that's fun, yeah. man. It's yeah. fun when you can put a smile on somebody's face and yeah. put, the, put that money into their pocket. Right. Does it make you, though, think like, oh, my God, like that wasn't that bad. And they got paid pretty good. Like... I might take a little dive over here when I'm in the club tonight. Because you know? <laughs> <laughs> I know a couple right. of the laws and the rules. Like, you ever think like that? Yeah. You know what's funny? I haven't even been in an accident all throughout the time. I've been, for that. Yeah. This is real. Yeah. No. Yeah, that was real. <laughs> um, I have. I haven't even had a situation where, and I'm like, I definitely don't want to ever deal with an accident because getting your car repaired, all the parts since COVID takes so long to get. It's just such a headache. I'm like, I don't even know that it's worth it. And yeah, I just, it's just not for me. Yeah. It's not for me to fake. I'm like, you maybe if the money was different, like money's low, maybe ask me then. <laughs> yeah, gotcha. So how do you, you know, you talked about a lot of co competition out there. How do, how do you go and compete against other people? What makes you better than somebody else? I have a lot of knowledge. I'm not an attorney, but any attorneys I'm going to talk to or talk with are going to immediately know, okay, you know what you're doing. You, you are, you know, experienced in what you're doing. And then on top of it, I'm, I'm relatable with the clients. So you might have a client in a tough time or, um, whatever they need a loan, they need transportation, things like that. I'm very good at giving them like a five star service mm. so that they feel like these attorneys don't have time to talk to all these clients, yeah. but you want to have that middle person who can kind of bridge that gap. Hey, you need to talk to your attorney. I'll get you on a schedule. You need this. I've got you whatever. And so I give like almost like a concierge type service to the client because they don't know what they're doing. They don't know what's going on. If they need more explanation, I don't have to wait for the attorney to call you. I can get on the phone and make almost every client feel comfortable in what's going on. Gotcha. So yeah. Lexi, you know, um, you know, you talk about this. You, you see yourself being becoming an attorney at all? You know, taking on a whole company, doing it yourself? 
I used to, and then I was like, I don't even have to because I'm in the work smarter, not harder. (laughs) So uh, marketing is really where it's at. Um, A lot of marketers can make more than attorneys or as much as an attorney. And I think I'm I'm just going into the marketing space in general. Gotcha. So newsflash, what kind of what kind of money are we talking? Millions. Yeah. Yeah. Million millions. Like attorneys make the average. So what percent attorney, do you guys get when you bring in? What's what's the average? You get to pay like ten percent or something. So attorneys can't pay uh, attorney fees. Gotcha. Out. So, but they can pay marketing companies. Right. So more whatever I do is a marketing fee. Gotcha. So that's, um, which may be a percent of something, but it's not a percentage of the attorney fees. Gotcha. <laughs> I gotcha. I'm with you. Yeah. I understand all of that. Yeah. <laughs> so having your own marketing company, how do you scale it? How do you scale it? How do you grow it? How do you grow? Getting more clients. That's how you grow it. So finding more lead sources. Um, investors are big in this space. It's Like I said, it's competitive. Everyone is raising the prices for the leads, you know, what you're paying per lead. And Georgia, it's like two to three thousand dollars, you know, a lead. Right. So you gotta have some money there to really scale that out. As far as everything else, uh, marketing wise, social media is the biggest, you know, presence that I'm using and just trying to get more content that's really relative to what I'm trying to market and making better content. That's Are you making content at. daily? No. No. So- I, I am I am at times. I go daily and then it's like I have a little break. It needs to be like you. And you know what? During that break is exactly when somebody slipped and fell and needed somebody (laughs) and you didn't post nothing. Exactly. You have to be consistent. That's one thing I did learn about social media and, you know, kind of, you know, with the space. There's something for everybody, right? Yeah. Just it, it just it. And the, and whether some whether you get one like or a million likes, it doesn't matter. That one like might be more important than those millions, you know. Yes. So that's the reality yeah. of it all. So um, you know, so you got to be consistent with it. So I would say get on a consistent schedule. Yeah. And make sure you're posting something every single day, regardless if it looks the same, seems the same. It might hit somebody that you know didn't see it before and didn't know. That's good insight. I'm I'm gonna okay. use that. Yeah. You'll see me now posting every day. You know, being <laughs> being a being a female too, starting your own business because you had a marketing business. Do you get any special grants? Like any grants out there and stuff like that for you? So Have that, you looked into any of that? Uh, that would be something as I expand, looking into more options for resources. But I've had I've been pretty blessed and lucky to have the opportunity to have what I need right now to really get my get started and keep pushing but as you know you want to grow you need to look into everything so right. I, i'm going to look into that yeah there's a lot of grants out there for females unlike you know you say it's a male's world yeah. they're gonna grant to us yeah but there, there's a lot of grants to, to <laughs> yeah females. y'all have enough grants out yeah, there <laughs> exactly well listen man it's been a pleasure talking to you today i'm yeah, glad you came down you. here i appreciate uh you know you giving some of these younger people out there the the hope that you know you can do something with what you do in college yeah. regardless of how it happens you know i was the same way i went to college four years everybody you know i was supposed to be a psychology um you know teacher and and um you know you sit back and you say geez do i really use my college degree from what i did yeah but you look back and say yeah it all helps somewhere along the lines right. with it all as long as you utilize it as a tool to what it is that you're trying to get to right yeah. exactly Thank you so much. For Absolutely. Me. Look at the camera. Tell the viewers one last thing. Give them something that a young 26-year-old lady might be out there wondering, wow, what can I do to grow my money and to help me get in a better position financially? You have to just get started. Start somewhere. Sometimes that first step is the hardest step. But if you never take it, then you'll never know where you can go. So take that first step. Take a leap of faith. Leave your job. <laughs> and just get started. There you have it, folks. <laughs> Another episode of Wham Ass Podcast. And as we always say here, if your life was a movie, would it be worth watching? And if the answer is no, then stop being ordinary and start being extraordinary. Till next Wednesday, I'm your boy Wham Bam. And as always, stay positive, baby, and keep testing negative. And I'm out.